ISO 14001, ISO's well-known standard for environmental management systems, was first launched in 1996. With the publication of the 2015 edition, we asked Acting ISO Secretary General Kevin McKinley why the standard has been revised. Well, the environmental context now is challenging. We see a lot of uh, difficult discussions on climate change. We see a lot of challenges for organizations to uh, meet expectations of policymakers related to water utilization, related to energy usage. These are big challenges, challenges that uh, are reflected as well in the views of their stakeholders, of shareholders the expectation that organizations will steward the environment and uh, perform uh, according to what they believe is appropriate in uh, a modern organization. So these types of uh, changes have, were very much taken to, into consideration by the committee that developed the new 14001. So Kevin, why is the standard so important? It's a tool. It's a tool that supports uh, advancement and supports continual improvement. The standard itself has gained recognition through use in organizations as a self-improvement tool. It's also gained prominence through uh, third-party recognition, through certification, where we have now more than 300,000 certificates for 14,001 globally, um, a sign of its impact and a sign of its uptake in many, many countries. Now, for users of the standard, what are the main benefits? The 14001 standard will be a way for organizations to help meet their legal requirements. That's certainly very important. And to also go beyond and to take measures that are in keeping with their, the expectations of their stakeholders, of their shareholders. It's also an organized way to get employees engaged on environmental meeting environmental commitments. Finally, it also is a competitive advantage. The use of ISO 14001 is something that can be uh, used as a distinguisher uh, from other organizations and even in many cases provide some financial advantage for the organization realizing certain efficiencies and improved performance. And Kevin, who is behind this standard? In this case, we had more than 70 participating ISO members actively contributing time of their experts, their nominated experts, to provide uh, insight and uh, draft the new 14001. It involved more than 120 people. Now let's talk to Anne-Marie Warris, one of the 120 experts involved and chair of the ISO subcommittee responsible. Anne-Marie, can you tell us what are the main changes? So the new version of ISO 14001 has seven specific changes. Um, there are others as well, and these are just the seven perhaps the most common one to talk about. The first one is the enhanced focus on integrating environmental issues into the strategic planning process of an organization. The stronger focus on leadership and the demands of leadership of an organization to get involved in these issues. Protecting the environment, which is increased to look at resource use and also to look at what demands may be put on the environment by the organization. The environmental performance, which was one of those things in the previous version of the standard that everybody said it was not strong enough, it's distinctly stronger now. The issue of life cycle perspectives, so the need to think about the perspective of a life cycle when you start looking at environmental aspects and impact. The issue of enhancing communication, so thinking about how you're communicating better with your stakeholders. And lastly, but not least, the important thing of moving us from a world where we thought everything was a paper to something that can be stored in the cloud and hence a small change to the term of documentation. And what are you hoping for the future of ISO 14001? But what am I looking for in the next 20 years? I'm hoping the standard will become the tool of choice for businesses to help them manage environmental issues in their strategic thinking, action and plans. From September 2015, there will be a three-year transition period for certified organizations.